Haymaker, Emily here, otherwise known as that mom with a laser. And it's on this channel where I attempt to simplify operating a laser while filling the maker heart and fueling the entrepreneurial spirit. I am so excited to share with you that I've been invited to be an instructor at the Summer Creative Retreat hosted by the Pigeon Letters. This is a week long retreat from August 2nd to August 12th made up of hundreds of artists that are gonna be doing workshops totally for free. In that workshop, I share how I created these macrame earrings from start to finish. So if you wanna enroll, make sure you snag your spot. It's totally free over at my website at www.thatmomwithalaser.co and be sure to click on the Summer Creative Retreat button. So this video is a compliment to that workshop where I'm gonna go more in depth when it comes to the process of creating a digital file that is laser ready. I'm gonna do this by drawing my image using Procreate on my iPad and then import it into Lightburn. So are you ready? Let's go. All right, guys, let me start off by saying first that I am not a graphic designer. I am self-taught here. Um, and I am by no means a professional in this area. As a matter of fact, some of you watching this are way more advanced. And if you're watching, please be kind in your commentary below. Okay. I'm just showing you guys what I felt was the easiest thing for somebody who had, you know, very basic skills. So here's the thing. If you don't have access to an iPad, you could use, you know, plain white computer paper and a Sharpie which I did attempt before I had an iPad, but I just found that editing it uh, and cleaning it up and getting perfect shapes was impossible. So this is the method that has worked best for me so far. To use this approach, you will need an iPad and the one you see me using here is an older one. I don't have the newest, fanciest iPads. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's not so old that it won't work with an Apple Pencil, which is another tool that you're gonna need. And then lastly, you need the app called Procreate. Now, for those of you that are Procreate gurus, I'm also self-taught here and I only know the very basics. If you really wanna learn how to use this app, I highly recommend um, looking up tutorials by you know, Procreate Masters here on YouTube. So I hope by now you're starting to see how simple and user-friendly this app really is. I mean, I'm not a professional, but my idea is starting to come to life here. So I'm just gonna let you guys kind of watch the process and that's really all I'm doing is just, you know, playing with the idea in my head and allowing my creativity to create. So now my image is ready and now I need to make it laser ready. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Lightburn and show you what the next steps would look like. Okay. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and imported my image into Lightburn. So I'm going to select the image, go to the tools function, and then I'm going to use the trace function right here. This is the nice part about uh, drawing the image digitally in an app like Procreate because look how nice and clean my lines are for the most part. If I had done this on paper, it wouldn't look so smooth. Okay, so that looks really good there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Then I'm going to select my image and delete it. So now the image is all one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup it. I'm going to click on my lonely man up here at the top, ungroup selection. And now I can work on each individual piece. So let me go ahead and zoom in for you. 
And there's a couple of easy things that I'm going to go ahead and fix right away. One, this circle, even though I thought it was a perfect circle in Procreate, it really wasn't. So I'm going to just redraw a circle to the dimensions, more or less, to the ones that I drew here. That looks pretty decent. And delete my bad circle. Done. Okay, and I'm assuming this circle probably isn't a perfect circle either. See that? It's kind of wobbly there. So I'm going to fix that too. And make another little circle. So far, so good. Okay, so let me go ahead and work on this main part right here. This little design, as it is, is going to engrave this way. Although this is really pretty and I might make another earring with the reverse. Um, the way I saw it in my head was a little different. I wanted the lines to be engraved. So I made sure to duplicate the semicircle and you know I did that on purpose because I wanted to do this. See how I'm doing that there? I'm going to give it an outline just like that. And then I'm going to group it all together. And now that's how I want it to engrave for the most part. I'm going to group this together. And I am going to create another circle. This will make sense in just a minute because I'm trying to get the, the image that I had in my head. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Now notice here, I can't see the rest of my circle underneath my red. So I, that just means I just want to switch my layers. So I want this black layer like that. This is just for visual purposes, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this part that I want engraved. I'm going to hold down my command key on my keypad, on my keyboard, I'm sorry. Then I'm going to select that other circle, and I'm going to use this function here, um, subtract one shape from the other. So now that's how I want it to look for the most part. Now I need to go ahead and clean up the nodes. So I'm going to select the outer portion of my earring, and then I'm going to click on the nodes function over here on the left. And now you see all these little, all these little nodes that is telling my shape what I want it to look like. Now the reason I want to clean up the nodes is because I want this to cut as efficiently as possible, and I want this to be a clean file. So Every little node that you see is a teeny tiny stop that the laser has to make when it's cutting your file. And I know that I can eliminate several of these, like this red one right here, I don't need that. So I'm going to hover over this node right here and I'm going to select the D button on my keyboard. And now it's deleted. I didn't need it, this is a perfect straight line. Then I have this curve here, and let's see, I've got one two that I can get rid of. Now I know that looks funky, but I'm just going to grab this blue node and then fix that curve. Okay, but now I don't have those two nodes here. I didn't need them. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Again, I'm just using the letter D on my keyboard. And then see now there, there weren't any blue nodes to grab, so I just selected the actual you know curve that I wanted to fix. Now let me zoom down here. This isn't looking too pretty, right? You see that? I'm holding down my space key at the moment so you can see that that's not like totally perfect there. So if you really want to be nitpicky, you just zoom in so you can see things even better. And if that's not working, like see it's still not a perfect curve, I can insert a node by pushing the letter I and then that might help me get the curve that I want a little better. Okay, so you can see how this can be pretty time consuming. So next time you, you know, think that file designers have it so easy, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of editing that goes on here and a lot of patience, okay? So I'm gonna do this just in a rough way to give you a general idea. I am not liking how that's looking. Let's fix this. 
but hopefully now you're kind of getting the general concept here. So I'm going to take my semicircle, look at all those nodes, one, two, three, four, I don't need half of them, so I'm going to delete them all. D, D, D on my keypad, and stretch out that node right there, and then I'm going to get rid of this one here. Oops, wrong one. This one over here, and this one too. Let's see how we do. That's a little funky there. But like I said, I'm, I'm just going to kind of give you a rough idea here. I'm not really going to go too much into it. That's where you get to have fun obsessing over <laughs> perfecting your own files. So I'm again, I'm deleting especially the lines because those are easy. There's no editing really involved there. I'm just pushing the letter D and simplifying it so that it's just two points. Okay. Let me clean this one up here. Grab the line. Ooh, you are looking a little crazy there. I don't think so. Not what we're going for. There you go. So that is pretty much the process. Once I have cleaned up as many of the nodes as I can, or that you know that I can stomach, <laughs> then my you know I'll test my file. I'll see how it cuts, and you know for all I know. This hole might be too big or it might be too small. You know, um, I think it's going to work, but I won't really truly know until I test it. So that's it, guys. It's, it's, it's not that hard depending on, you know, how intense your design really is. This is these are simple shapes. You know, the more intricate stuff, you know, really give those designers a shout out for... <laughs> being able to do this on a larger scale and a more intricate one. So now you notice here, this one is kind of crooked, right? And if I try to bring it up, it still is not becoming a straight line. So when that happens, I just zoom in and then I have much more control over the line. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to come up here. There's a whole lot going on here, and I don't feel like reshaping this semicircle. So I am just going to draw another circle right over it. Oops, don't want that as an engrave. I'm going to make that a cut. I'm just going to redraw the circle, hover it over. That looks pretty good. And then I am going to hold down my shift key, select the outer edge here, and I'm going to weld them together. Because, you know, what's the point in cleaning all that up if I don't really need to? I can kind of, you know, cheat my way, <laughs> make my life a little easier. So that's it. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and continue cleaning this up. I'll do a little time lapse here so you can see the process, but that's that's pretty much how I do it at least. If you have any tips, let me know in the comments below. That's it. 
I hope you learned a ton with me today. If you want to see how I took that digital file and created a finished project, then make sure to catch my workshop over at the Summer Creative Retreat. You can snag your spot, remember it's free, over at my website at www.thatmomwithalaser.co. That's all I've got for you today. I look forward to seeing you guys here soon over at That Mom with a Laser. Thank you.